Hello, my name is Michael Lutzer, German Space Administration. I'm working in the uh, Satellite Communication Department and there in uh, Wolf Meyer's Optical Communications Group. I would like to give you a short overview about our optical communication activities in Germany. Um, as most of you know, uh, since 2014 we are flying a laser comm terminal from TSAT Spacecom on the AlphaSat uh, geostationary satellite. Uh, the satellite is located at 25 degrees east and operated by Inmarsat in London. The LCT is able um, to support a data rate up to 1.8 gigabit per second. Additionally, we accommodated a KA band downlink payload, which has a dedicated KA band receiving antenna in Oberfachenhofen uh, near Munich. We are using this LCT uh, for direct optical ground links to our transportable uh, adaptive optics ground station called TAOGS, located at Tenerife, Canary Islands in Spain. Additionally, we are doing intersatellite links on a regular basis between the LCT on AlphaSat and the Sentinel satellite 1A and B, which is a synthetic aperture radar satellite, and the Sentinel 2AB, which is flying a hyperspectral optical sensor. We are using these links for the monitoring of the long-term behavior of the LCTs in orbit. Additionally, we are using the AlphaSat LCT as testbed for new software developments, which may be used in the future for the operational European Data Relay satellite system called EDRS. The AlphaSat payload uh, was also used for the first test with uh, prototype airborne laser bomb terminals. Since 2016, uh, the first EDRS geonaut, called EDRS A, is operational. The satellite is located at 9 degrees east and operated by UTLSAT. The data relay system is operated by Airbus Defense and Space. The LCT and the KA band downlink payload is able to support a user data rate up to 1.8 gigabit per second. Besides the optical payload, a KA band ISL payload, which supports a data rate up to 300 megabit per second, is also available. The first customer for the optical ISLs are the Sentinel satellites. The first customer for the KA, KA band uh, ISL service is the Columbus module on the International Space Station. So using uh, the optical ISL services, uh, for the uh, Sentinel system generated a 50% higher data throughput uh, for the Sentinel 1A and 1B satellites. To say it in other words, uh, since we use the optical ISLs via the ERS system, we are flying a virtual third Sentinel 1 satellite. Additionally, we verified near real-time requirements for the Sentinel 1 satellites. It uh, takes only 10 minutes from a data take in orbit to the raw data to the ground. So the users are getting the data much faster than only via the standard X-band downlinks. In August 2019, the second EDRS GeoNode, the EDRS-C, was launched and located at 31 degrees east. The satellite is operational since May 2020. Uh, since the launch of EDRS-A, more than 40,000 optical inter-satellite links with the Sentinel satellites took place, with 1,000 optical links uh, per month and more than two petabytes of data transferred yet, the system is now fully operational and fulfills the user requirements. In the ESA frame, Germany is working on the development of the next generation geo laser comm terminal called MGGL. Keywords are higher data rates, dual wavelength capabilities, and more flexible uh, operations. With the four Sentinel satellites in orbit and four additional satellites under procurement, 11 LCTs are either operational in orbit or are under preparation for the integration in the second batch of the LEO satellites, the Sentinel satellite. Based on the requirements uh, of uh, the LEO satellite operators, uh, for smaller satellites, a dedicated LEO LCT development was started. The smart LCT has a lower weight and uses a modular approach, which uh, makes uh, the accommodation on smaller platforms much easier. Based on the pointing capabilities of uh, the future LEO Earth observation satellites, the customer is now able to decide to order LEO LCTs with or without a cross pointing assembly. The first customer of the smart LCT without a CPA is the Pleiad Neo system from Airbus Defense and Space. 
And digitally, the satellite has a, a retasking uh, capability called satellite reactive tasking. And this will be done via the EDRS A geosatellite. This gives the system a much more flexible way to react on near real time requirements uh, of the user and customer. So, what you see here are some pictures from uh, already flying LCTs in orbit. Uh, on the upper side, on the left side, you see the Sentinel 1 satellite just released uh, from his uh, uh, upper stage. On the right side, you see the Sentinel 1B. This uh, satellite uh, is just uh, on the photo you see that just preparations for the launch. On the left uh, upper side, uh, the uh, lower side, you see the Sentinel 2A. You see the LCT on the top deck of the satellite, and on the right side. Also, lower part of the picture, um, you see the Sentinel 2B just moments before the payload shroud uh, was closed. So, with uh, our Transportal Adaptive Optics Ground Station, TOGS, uh, optical satellite uh, links to the ground, but also feeder links to the ground are used uh, with the LCT on, on the Alphabet satellite. A lot of Telemetry data, is, uh, uh, which is used for the characterization of the atmosphere, is available and was used for the development of new transmission schemes, uh, which are able to handle the burst effects in the atmosphere. Following a refurbishment in 2020-21, the next satellite to ground campaign is planned for the summer of 2021. For those who are interested in EDS compatibility tests with their national development, uh, developed uh, laser comm terminals, the Alphabet satellite and the TLHS are available for joint tests. So, what's next? Um, the optical technology can also be used for other applications. Uh, for example, the next generation of global positioning systems, the optical links can be used for time synchronization and range measurements between the satellites. And then instead of using uh, uh, RF technology for this uh, task. Uh, there is no need for an ITU coordination. Additionally, the optical link cannot be jammed. For us, uh, the next important step is the implementation of the optical technology for our military and second security based users. Besides the already verified and commercially available hardware for Geo Leo optical links, Planning activities are ongoing for a GeoGeo -Geo backbone net. Additionally, work is ongoing in the area of Geo to aircraft links. New applications where more technology work is necessary are optical field links to Geo satellites and the support of quantum key distribution. Both activities are supported by programs running at the European Space Agency and the European Union. We are closely monitoring the development at the Space Development Agency, which will test optical crosslinks for building a network in the sky. I think this is the first step in the direction of a system approach, using the optical technology as enabler. This ends my presentation about the ongoing optical comm activities at the German Space Agency. If you have questions, feel free to get in contact with me. Last but not least, I would like to thank the Aerospace Corporation, Corporation giving us a chance to speak to you.